There's a pattern of handling environment variables that I would recommend against that I've seen propagating within the TypeScript community. And in this tutorial, I will cover why that is the case that I recommend against it and what's a better, simpler alternative to use. So let's go. Now you will need something to parse your process.env for you. You can write a simple function yourself, but for this purpose, we're going to use Zod. So here we are saying that our process.env is going to have a value, some secret, which must be a required string. And similarly, another secret, which is also going to be a required string. And just for some added context, environment variables are always strings. Here we are simply making sure that these two strings are not going to be empty. Once we have this Zod schema, we can use its parse method to validate that process.env follows this structure. Now I'm perfectly happy with this, but I don't recommend that you do the next step, which is declaring what the node.js process.env type definition is globally. This type definition is basically saying that for process.env, add the properties that we have from env schema. It does work and it is type safe. So if we use process.env some secret at this point, it will be validated as of type string using TypeScript. But there is no guarantee that you are accessing this after you have invoked parse. And in fact, you will also need a dangling import of this env module from somewhere within your code base for this to work. So what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is actually quite simple. Get rid of all of this junk and simply export the parse result. And now within your code base, when you use this value, it is guaranteed to have been parsed successfully. And additionally, you have a nice handle to find all usages of env within your code base. I think this is a good example of just because you can use TypeScript doesn't mean that you should. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.